the end of la tormenta, but not tormenta enough. Let's go inside and make some real weather. So today we're shooting a bunch of shots for a film which requires a series of establishing shots with really big brooding skies and lightning bursts. Now we could go and find a big expansive space to camp out in and wait for the weather to change and film it for real. But that could take weeks or even years in this country where let's face it, the weather is moderate to say the least. So for years, filmmakers have employed various tricks to mimic dramatic or even supernatural skies, from map paintings to cloud tanks. Now CG can recreate incredibly realistic clouds and skies, often augmenting with photographic images to get great results. But simulating and rendering this natural phenomena can take a huge amount of time and money. But depending on your requirements, there is another way. It's this stuff. We're never going to get it in here again, are we? <laughs> oh, it's weirdly soft, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of spongy, isn't it? Yeah. It's like oh, it's quite pleasing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to lay it out, and we want to have enough space that we can fire, a, essentially, our kind of light that is, that is our sun. Mm -hmm. So we want most distance for that, and then maybe a little bit of space on the other side if we need to bounce and fill a little bit. Yeah. 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 OK. I guess we just start throwing it out. Yeah, don't be shy. You can do it all of it. Yeah. Let <laughs> <laughs> me grab Go. it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that's two bags of clouds. That's what we've got there. <laughs> I'll just try and push it rather than rip it up. Yeah. I love this stuff. This is my new favorite thing. <laughs> it just looks like clouds. It looks like clouds <laughs> already. <laughs> Too easy. Too easy. Yeah. Yeah, once you get enough of it, it starts to miniaturise properly. Yeah, it really does. It, it, yeah, it just miniaturises itself. I guess that's a start. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of sea stands actually have what's called a turtle base, which means you can take this off, and then you've got a nice low stand, so you can actually set quite chunky lights nice and low to the ground, which is obviously ideal for what we're doing here with the clouds. So we want to get them somewhere close to their height. Here we go. We're going to use a 2K as a starting point just to see if that's powerful enough. I want to fire it in from some distance because I'm not going to put any diffusion or anything in like that. It's mimicking the sun, right, which is a hard light. But bear in mind the sun is a long way away and so ultimately it is diffused surely by the nature of how far it is from the earth. We're not working to scale here because I don't even know what that is, but it's a case of trial and error. Put it in, see how it looks, does it work with your frame rate and all of that. Because this is the side that our light is on and we're wary of setting it too high. I'm just going to try and cheat it a little bit by bringing the height of the clouds on the light side down a little bit so that it's not casting shadows over the rest of the clouds. So we've still got low, but all the clouds are, are getting those little touches of light. Yeah, it looks lush, doesn't it? So yeah, let's get camera out. So now that we've got our frame, we can start being like, OK, well, we can't see that. Take that out. And then probably what we'll end up with is a kind of a, a funnel shape going out so that literally we're using all the cloud we have and it's all in frame. There's nothing wasted. I just can't get over how, how soft it feels. We could do that all day. I kind of want to jump in it, but I need to remember there's a very hard floor underneath and it's really not that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that springy. So what actually is this stuff? It's called fibre fill. It's a polyester material. It's fine thread. It's used more commonly for stuffing uh, soft toys and right. cushions, things like that. So it's a very kind of, yeah, soft, fluffy mm. material. It's a bit nicer than cotton wool because it's got less particles with it. Right. And it's fire retardant as well, which is a big, a big plus. <laughs> Health and safety kids. It's got quite a similar property to how clouds catch the light. So there's that kind of half kind of opaque, half transparent kind of look to it. It takes a form really nicely, so you can kind of sculpt it and tease it into a shape and it will hold its shape and it's cheap to get. 
we add a matte box to our rig to cut out some lens flares we're getting from our backlight. Nice light, so. Okay. Um, yeah, give it a go. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. At this point, we've got a pretty monochrome, high contrast look, which is very stylized, but not particularly realistic. So next, we want to add a little color and fill to the foreground. So we've got our kind of key light, which is essentially the sun, which is really a backlight as a key light. But obviously, it's very dark in the rest of the, the, rest of the clouds. So we need to bring that up. And we also want to add some color to it, because we want to create storm clouds, right? So we're going to go for a sort of slightly bluey, purpley fill. Uh, to hit from this side, but we don't want it to be direct, we want it to be nice and subtle, so we want to bounce that light. So what I'm going to do is set up a poly board going across over the camera like that, and then we'll have a lamp coming in on an arm that will fire into that, and that will give us a nice, soft, bluish hue. Delightful. Okay, so one of the things I've realised is that we, we don't have probably the gel that we really need. Um, we're going for something bluish, purplish, uh, and so we're going to give this little guy a go. This is a RGB LED sort of faux fluorescent light. And what this enables us to do is move through hue and saturation so that hopefully we can find a colour that's, that's kind of what we're going for. Um, let's see what we've got here. Hey, OK, that might be a little, uh, might be a little much, although uh, it's sort of cyberpunk vibes. Um, so, yeah, we're going to sort of scan through here and see if we can find a colour a little, little closer to what we're after, if I can remember how to work it. Okay, so we're bluing it up, we're bluing it up. Uh, it's kind of getting there. How's that? Mm. Yeah. Yeah? Looking good. So while I tweak the lighting, let's go and see what tricks JP's got lined up for us. What we want to do is recreate the lightning flashes that you would get with a big sky full of thunder and lightning. And the way that we're going to approach it is by using flash bulbs. Now these are, are very old flash bulbs, the type that you'd use to use in old Instamatic film cameras. And they're disposable cubes. Each one of them would hold four flashes. So what we're doing is we're actually taking the bulbs out of this cube and using it with our firing system to create flashes within our fiber filled clouds. The light that they emit has a really nice decay to it, so they give a very natural uh, fade after the flash, which you wouldn't get with modern flashes, which are strobe-based. They're designed to give a very, very fast flash. These actually give a pulse of light, and after they flash, they decay down, which is very much like you would see in nature when lightning was brewing in some clouds. So the first step is to dissect the cube, which will reveal four bulbs. And what we can actually do is we can separate these bulbs and wire them into our firing system and trigger them independently to give us single flashes. This system is kind of a prosumer firing system intended for fireworks. And they're the type of fireworks that have an electrical ignition to them. So these are quite easy to come by. And this is one of the cheaper options to have a system that's wireless and enables a sequence to be run. So a firing sequence can be set that will trigger each individual bulb at a preset time delay. That means we can run a whole uh, strafe of lightning, if you like, through the clouds. Now, the benefit of using a firing system designed for fireworks is that once you make the connection, it will do a continuity check for you. This is passing a very low voltage through the bulb to check that it's good for firing. And you can see here, as we add our bulb into the circuit, we've got a continuity light, and this indicates to us that this bulb is good for firing. We've pigmented the bulb using glass paint, and we've done this for a couple of reasons. One, to minimize the sheer output from these bulbs, because they're so bright, and also to give a color cast to the flash. And since we're looking at lightning and electrical kind of flashes, that tends to border on the blue, purple, pink, spectrum so that's what we've emulated here so now we've got our flash bulb all wired and ready to go what we're going to do is replace it embedded or behind the fiber fill material which will act as a natural diffuser of the light and we'll distribute them in and amongst the clouds at different depths and layers to give us our flashes we'll be setting our camera to 50 frames per second and conforming later to 25 so that will give us a slow motion playback 
And what that does with these photo flashes is create a bigger scale because the decay of the light will be just that little bit slower and give us a bigger scale. Hey humans, how are you doing today? Has hectic life got you stressed out? It's okay. You can be with us here in the clouds. <laughs> Flashing. Three, two, one. Now while JP resets the detonators, I want to adjust the lighting, just to see what making a few changes will give us. Okay, turning over. Three, two, one, flash. Yeah, if we, uh, I think if we combine that with a moving camera, that would be dupe. Yeah. Dupe on a roof. When my man asks for movement, that's what he gets. We use this spider dolly and track system to mount our tripod. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I think I'm going to have to stick this on a boom to get it out of the way so that we can bring the track right in. That'll work. Okay, so we've got a motion control dolly here. I mean, I know you all must be very impressed. Um, and let's be brutally honest about what we're dealing with here. Now, um, <laughs> as rigs go, it's pretty janky, but hey, if it gets the shot that you need, then okay. When you're working in 3D space with something like this, a static shot is only getting you so far. As soon as you start moving it, you start to see that depth and those the parallax between the, the different depths of clouds, and it just looks amazing, but you need it to be so steady. What we're trying to do is recreate the movement of clouds, you know, because of wind and currents and air currents and things like that. And so it's got to be super, super steady. So you need motion control particularly when you're working with miniatures. As soon as you get any sense of a, a physical, a human operator, everything's out, right? So it has to be motion control. So what we've got here is uh, JP's turntable, Lazy Susan, they're, they're called, God knows why. And initially we had it just wrapping around the struts inside here, but then we were getting a very clear kind of one strut, two strut, and so it's just creating a slight boom, boom, a slight inconsistent movement. So, we needed some sort of cylindrical thing that the, the, the string can wrap around, and hey, hey, you know, whatever works. Some of these bulbs are duds. Oh no, that's outrageous. Over 40 years old, how dare they? Yeah, nice. Yeah, oh yeah, it's really nice. Those close ones are really tasty as well. Okay, so we've done our sort of first setup. Um, now what we want to do is start playing with the lighting a little bit. So we're keeping the clouds in the same place, similar sort of frame. But what we want to do now is try something else. Like you get so much different kinds of light going on in the clouds, depending on what time of day it is and what the weather's doing. So we want to create a nice brooding kind of dark light uh, going on in the clouds. And an idea we're going to try now is to distribute a load of LED panels uh, and we're going to secrete them underneath the clouds so that they're all being, as we see it, uplit. But of course, when we flip that image round, they will be lit from above. To begin with, we're just going to offer a couple up and see if the effect is working. And if it looks good, then we'll distribute more. 
essentially it's all just about experimentation, playing with things, and especially in a situation where, like this where we're trying to recreate nature, is, is just look at it, see how it behaves, and try and recreate that. There's a, there's a detonator in there, watch out. Um, how are you supposed to find anything in this? Ah, oh, Ari, you actually make daylight. <laughs> so you, you can sort of see that we are getting some inconsistency of colour across the LEDs. And to be honest, this is part of the problem with LED panels in general, not just the cheap ones. I mean, there's a CRI rating, which is a colour representation index. And it's how accurately LED panels can recreate colour, daylight, tungsten. And you can see across these ones, you know, three different brands here, and they're all a bit different, which is tricky when we're doing something like this, and that's why you get correction gels to try and make it better. We're shooting raw, uh, and that is going to give us some flexibility, so we are going to be able to manipulate colour. Obviously, when you're manipulating different areas of colour, it's more of a hassle in post, but at least it's possible. As I can see it, the most accurate one is this, which is made by Ari and it costs about five times what all of the others cost. That's how that works. So we tried taking out the bluish hued tube, but it left us with an image that was just too high contrast. And that blue hue was still giving us a natural color. So we kept that in and proceeded to the next change, which was to switch our 2K for a much smaller lamp. We tried the 150 watt dado first and it worked really well as it still gave that nice backlight sun effect, but at much lower output. It's really complemented our brooding cloud effect. Remember, the wind blows in more than one direction. I'm going to try track in. So the last thing we want to try in this setup is create a tracking move going forward. Now again, we want to keep it motion controlled, so actually I think what we'll do is we'll be slowly pulling back. And we've probably got about a foot to two feet of usable um, before you know the track starts to come into shot and so on at the angle that we're at. It can either be used as it is, as a kind of a flyover shot, as though we're above the clouds, and you could then have a plane coming into shot, but over the top of them, shot as a separate element, or we can do the flip, and then it'll be like the clouds are sort of slow rolling in or out if you don't reverse the film. We reverted to our first lighting setup for this one. I had an idea for something really fun we could do later with a plate of those clouds moving oh, in. Yes, it is. As you can see, compared to the first setup, the LED panels gave a really different look with those highlights suggestive of thinner cloud areas. So JP then added some light rays in post to bring another layer of detail. Be sure to hit that notification icon because we've got another episode coming up where we show you how to use a plate like this with a miniature to create an exterior shot. And if anyone can spot which infamous abode this is, shout in the comments. Well, I think that was probably one of the most fun things I've ever shot. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. It's inspired you to get some of this weird stuff and have some, have some cloud fun. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel and all of that so that you can be updated on when the next video is coming out. Time to bag up some clouds. Adios.